The link between Minnesota's Iron Range and the steel mills of America has been formed by Great Lakes ships for nearly a century. Traditionally, iron ore and the taconite pellets were loaded at gravity docks, which used many loading chutes. The process was efficient for its time, but slow compared to modern systems. Much time was lost loading a few hatches at a time and then shifting or moving the vessel several times along the dock to realign with full pockets. Today's thousand-foot ships use loading systems which position cargo precisely in their holes. The ship loaders load all hatches at once at a rate of 10 to 20,000 tons per hour. Two people can load an entire ship with 60,000 tons of pellets in less than five hours without ever moving the ship. Security call, security call, security call. WXQ As a vessel prepares to enter Duluth Superior Harbor, it checks for other ship traffic and signals the aerial lift bridge. Phoenix security call, WXQ 4511. The motor vessel Edwin H. Gott will be inbound to Duluth Piers in approximately 30 minutes, going west to 6 Masabi. WXQ 4511, the motor vessel Edwin H. Gott. When the ship nears the dock, line handlers are swung out and lowered over the side to the dock. There, they use heaving lines to guide heavy steel cables to mooring bits. Winches on deck pull on the cables, snugging the vessel up against the dock face. The self-unloading boom is then swung out of the way over the ship's side while the remaining hatch clamps are loosened. A traveling crane is used to lift off the large steel covers. When one of these modern giants arrives at an ore dock, she is docked so that her hatches line up with the conveyor shuttles on the dock above. Specially designed rail cars bring taconite pellets from the iron range to the dock. The pellets they carry are a concentrate made from low-grade iron-bearing taconite rock. Taconite pellets can be loaded directly from rail cars into the dock pockets, or they can be transferred by conveyor to a two and a half million ton storage area near the dock. One of the ship's mates has charge of the loading process. The mate may work on deck or from high up in the ship's pilot house. Loading must be watched carefully and proceed according to a designated plan so that the ship is not damaged by uneven loading. The mate checks the ship's draft using gauges in the pilot house or direct measurement on the ship's side before loading any cargo. A ship with no cargo in her hold usually carries water as ballast to make her more seaworthy than if empty or only partly loaded. Ballast water is pumped out during loading. When all is ready, the mate calls for loading to begin, often within just a few minutes of docking. I got the ship loader. The mate is in constant radio communication with the operator of the ship loader high above the dock. Stop. When the operator receives the OK to begin loading, he lowers the shuttles out over the hatch openings on deck. The conveyor belts are extended into position, and taconite begins pouring into the cavernous cargo hold below. The mate carefully records the amount of cargo being loaded and watches the trim lights. When the trim lights indicate the ship is leaning or listing to one side or the other, the mate calls for belts to be retracted or extended to distribute the cargo more evenly. You want to uh, move? Yeah, just uh, uh, Thousands of tons of pellets bit, uh, are transferred into the ship within just a few hours. Yeah, extend it out just a little bit. I'll tell you when to shut off. Okay, okay on two. That's good. Security call, security call, security call. WXQ 4511, the motor vessel Edwin A. Scott will be departing uh, west to 6. When Wasabi loading is complete, loader, the uh, crane is again left, used to replace the heavy steel hatch cover. Deck hands security carefully security secure security each clamp, snapping it into position to make the covers watertight. <laughs> Meanwhile, the self unloading boom is secured, lines are cast off and the ship slowly begins its journey through the harbor toward Lake Superior and its destination on the lower lakes. Other Twin Ports docks handle different kinds of bulk cargo, such as limestone for construction and agricultural use, or a variety of grains for domestic and overseas markets. 
and low sulfur western coal used by electrical generating plants. Each dock is specially designed for the cargo it handles and the types of ships which call there. Duluth Superior Harbor, with its 17 miles of channels, is maintained by the Army Corps of Engineers. Our harbor is the largest and most important bulk cargo transshipment port on the Great Lakes and among the greatest of the nation's ports in total cargo handled each year. For more information, ask for our faculty.